1998, the Nashville Predators made their debut at Bridgestone Arena in downtown Nashville. Five short years later, in their 2004 season, the Predators qualified for their first Stanley Cup playoffs. And in 2017, this team advanced to their first Stanley Cup Finals in the National Hockey League. But while many know the Predators' victories on the ice, few fans know their charitable works behind the scenes. Recently, our media production team visited the new Ford Ice Center in Bellevue to interview Sean Henry, Chief Executive Officer, President, and Alternate Governor of the National Predators. Mr. Henry, who as a young boy began his career in sports management as a busboy for a professional sports team concession stand, now spends his time ensuring the National Predators' mission holds true. As you're about to see, the Predators' goal as an influential organization is to build philanthropic partnerships and use their distinctive set of assets to support the youth and their families in the Nashville community they now call home. You know, I, I started doing this though, I didn't know it, but I was 13 years old. I was a busboy for a food and beverage company at Jones Beach State Park in New York. Turned out that company serviced sports teams around the country. Didn't know it, I worked there because I wanted to go to college. If I was gonna go to college, I was gonna pay for it myself. So I worked for them from the time I was in junior high through high school. I became a full-time employee while I was in high school still. Worked for them all through college. And uh, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't have gone to college. They basically paid for my college. I agreed to stay with them for a year after I graduated. Never thought that would translate into you know, a 30-year career. That's exactly what it became. I got here 10 years ago, and Mayor Dean, Carl Dean was the mayor at the time. We got together right away. What do we need to do to be more successful for us? the Predators, Bridgestone Arena, and then the city, we needed to grow more visitors to our building and then in other parts of the community. So we said, all right, let's build an ice rink. And he said, all right, there's a mall that is basically bankrupt or vacant. I think that's where we should build it. Uh, well, I agree. So I said, well, meet me there tomorrow at 11 o'clock. He was nowhere to be found. His uh, left hand called and said, hey, where are you? We're out here in Antioch waiting for you. I said, well, I'm in Bellevue. What are you talking about Antioch? I was never even to Antioch before. I said, well, this is what I meant. If this one's successful, then we'll build one in Bellevue. Our, you know, our goal is we have downtown, you want to go east, west, south, and north. At the time, we had one at Franklin, so it made all the sense in the world to build one in Bellevue and then Antioch, and he reversed that. And His idea was if the rink can produce the economic impact results for the surrounding community that you say it can by your activity, and it works in Antioch, then it's going to be really easy to build them in other parts of the city and other cities as well. And he could have been more right. What we did in Antioch was incredible, changed the financial outlook of what could be in that community, and it made it really easy for us then to come out to Bellevue. When we pod one of these in an area, we know what's going to happen around it. When we worked with the developer and agreed that we would build this here, it made it easier for him to develop the rest of one Bellevue place. Without this as the anchor, I'm not sure if that happens. Without one Bellevue place as a development, who knows what the future of Bellevue would have been. You now see the development and look at the boom of buildings that are going up around it. Same thing in Antioch. There were no investments made in Antioch the five years prior to our rink opening, the five years since it's been opening, and it's amazing the amount of investment that's happened out there. So it's pretty rewarding to truly change communities, and while we're doing it, we're changing the face of hockey. How do you all use these Ford Ice Centers and stuff to just promote this, in general, the sport of hockey? 20 years from now, 30 years from now, we want more and more people to have played hockey at some point. You don't have to play hockey to be a Predator fan, but if you play hockey, you're probably going to be a Predator fan, so that's part of it. But it's not about this egocentric nature of growing future season ticket holders. What it really is about is using this great game to make the community better. We know that if you play hockey, you're going to be a better volleyball player, a better football player, a better person, because the team aspect of the game, the, the things you learn playing hockey translate to everything else you're ever going to do. You know, Antioch was the busiest ice rink in North America. I think Bellevue is going to become the busiest ice rink in North America, with Antioch being the second busiest. Now, I say we don't have to promote it. What we do have to promote are all the great offerings we have, because what we don't want to do is just service the hockey or figure skating community. We want to make sure that homeschools, senior citizens' homes, know that they can come out here all day for different programming and activities. We want to make sure that the kids that aren't playing hockey have a chance to try it for free. Our Get Out and Learn program, our predecessor, our Just Learn to Skate program that Scott Hamilton has designed. I mean, you're gonna learn how to skate from Scott Hamilton. It's pretty neat. So I wanna make sure that we're talking to a broader audience than just those that know about the Ford Ice Centers. That's what's important. So how do, how do the National Predators uh, utilize these facilities on days where they don't have games down in Bridgestone? Now what's fun is when we do have an away game or a home game, this becomes a viewing center. You know, so you can go over draft picks and the game's on 13, 15 TVs, whatever it may be. 
and you'll see people congregate around it. So this is used agnostically to what's happening at Bridgestone Arena. The busier Bridgestone Arena is, the more we get a chance to promote what's going on out here. We didn't even have to do a sales job. We explained what we wanted to do, what our vision was, and the answer was yes, and we've just grown. And I think if you ask them, they would tell you this is one of the best things they've ever done. You know, long-term vision, take risks, don't be afraid to be wrong, but always look out for our, our customers first, our clients first, our guests first, and our, each other, our employees. And with that mindset, you're gonna be successful. And been here about 10 years as well now, and it's been a lot of fun. We haven't reached the ultimate prize yet. We haven't won the cup. We've done a lot of really good things despite that. And this is only five minutes from CPA, so go Lions, go Preds. Currently, the Ford High Center in Bellevue is a twin rink recreational facility which hosts many high school hockey games and tournaments, including those played by our own CPA hockey team. The facility, located in West Nashville, includes a full restaurant, draft picks, a Piranis hockey world, and numerous hockey and figure skating programs for children and adults. Thank you, Mr. Henry, for leading the Predators and for partnering with our community as a whole. I'm Garrison, and until next time, have a good day, everyone.